Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how thoughts of community or being solitary or having a strong personality can help you in your goals? That's what we'll talk about today. I like the idea of being a sculptor, just me alone, making something. That's solitary existence. Franz Kafka. Today, we're going to talk more about cultures and other thoughts around the world about how happiness or success can be seen by other people. And we're going to use some internet guidance for this. We're also going to use the book, Happiness Found in Translation from Tim Lomas, where he talks about different words and ideas around the world that help us frame success. The first word that we have is salvagent. And that means walking around untethered or being alone, being a person inside your own head. We talked about previous podcasts about people who went for walks to find other people, meet other people. But this is about really challenging yourself just inside your own brain, going for a walk, thinking about things, not interacting with other people, mostly just wandering alone. And he also says in the book, and hopefully to places you've never been or seen before. It's an interesting concept, I think, of walking alone, of being in your own thoughts. It's a different kind of walk, certainly, than going around and meeting people. So I think it's worth evaluating. I know that when I go for walks, particularly in the woods, when I go hiking, and if I'm by myself, I get a lot of time to think. It's funny how many times I come out of a long walk in the woods and something that was hard for me to solve suddenly becomes obvious. What I need to do next becomes very clear. And it's all because I had that solitary walk. So I think it's a good word. And I think it's something that could find some benefit to you. Our next word is a Croatian word called fieka. And the idea behind this word is the sweetness of doing nothing. And I think it's just pure relaxation not trying to accomplish anything, not trying to plan anything, just being completely relaxed. I think it's kind of funny because I get that. I think it's healthy for us to relax and not be involved in anything. And I think it helps us get into a very calm state of mind when we do that. But I think, too, it can be taken too far. There was an article I'll link in the show notes that talks about a person who went to Croatia and he tried to get someone who chartered boats to bring him someplace. And the guy didn't want to do it. He's relaxing. He's in rest. And I think the guy had a wrong take on it because he realized that he was the jerk by asking someone to do something. And I don't think it makes you a jerk for asking someone to do their job. I know that sounds very American and it's a very American point of view for it, but we do depend on each other in society for the things they do, whether they're the farmers growing food, whether it's the people in the stores. While relaxation is really relaxing and really awesome and something important that we do, also doing our jobs and getting someplace in society also worthwhile. So for this particular person who wouldn't do their job because he was doing this deep relaxation, eventually at some point the world stops, right? You won't have food on your plate. Things in your house won't get fixed. And so I think there has to be a very careful balance to it. And so the blog article I included in the show notes, he said that he realized that no one was busy, no one was rushing around and complaining, that there was no urge to go back to the office or do anything. They were just all resting. And I think it is important that we rest like that. But I also wonder, to what extent did the people in the office wonder, hey, when's that guy going to come back and start doing his job? I remember Linda Ellerby used to be on a commune back in the 60s. And she realized at some point that some of the people were working to make the commune better and other people in the commune were doing anything because the idea behind the commune was no one was forced to do anything. But when no one was forced to do anything, it usually meant that no one did anything, nothing ever got done, and eventually the commune fell apart because there was no sense of duty or structure to the rest of the people. So I think this is an interesting concept as long as it's being done in a very limited way. 
I maybe appreciate this less than other people. Maybe you'll find some appreciation of your own in this lifestyle. The next word is Chinese. It's wu wei, which means doing nothing. It's effortless action, I guess, in the terms. So you can do something as long as you're not pressing yourself, as long as you're not forcing yourself into action or to doing things. It's really meant to be this kind of more flowy action that is coming from effortlessness. It's coming from who you are, what you are, which is a different take on it and is also interesting. There's a German word that's called entrunkt, and it means just being lost in your own world. You know, when you're on a bus or a train or you're sitting in your chair and you're just lost and you're thinking about anything and everything. It could be daydreaming. There used to be this cartoon when I was a kid where this boy was sitting at his desk in school and he'd look out the windows and then the sides of his smile would curl up as he would just lose himself in some adventure as a daydream. That was kind of me as a kid, but it's also doing it in a way where maybe you're walking, maybe you're reading, or you're just cleaning your house and you're just lost in thought. Up to now, we've been talking about ways that you can be involved in just your own world, but there are other words that involve other people. So we had huga before as a concept. This is kosalig, which is the Norwegian version of comfort and happiness. There's also Misa, which is the Swedish version of it. And so they talk about how cats sitting in the sun have Misa. And of course, these with Huga and Misa and all the rest, they're about being relaxed, doing nothing, but also spending time with other people, being in the moment, enjoying people around you. Again, the fireplace and the hot cocoa talks about Misa Fika, which is a coffee break, kind of that relaxation moment where you come in from a very blustery winter outdoors and then you come into a coffee shop and have a hot cup and just feel cozy back again. There's Heselek, which is Dutch word, which means being both physically and emotionally comfortable, cozy in your own thoughts. And so it doesn't really, again, have an English word associated with it, but It really talks about spending time with the people you love in that comfortable situation. And then there's the Yagan language, which has the word Mamhiblap Panapai, which means a look that two people have together that cannot be explained. They're sharing something that's really intimate. It's not meant for action. It's not meant for any follow-ups, but they're just looking at each other, hoping that the other person understands what they are thinking or what they want. And this word was in the Guinness Book of World Record for the most succinct word. And it comes from Tierra de Fuego. It was called one of the hardest words to translate. I, I guess so. But that look of knowing to someone else. I suppose it could be this concept of two people who are romantically interested in each other, but it also could mean something of a meaningful silence between two people. And this article that I included in my show notes describes it as not so much of a romantic thing, but is just sharing this thought and desire and this wish of the other person by looking at them and knowing what they're thinking and that it's just beyond words what it is the two people are sharing. It's really kind of a funny thought because there's a lot of description that goes on in this word and a lot of discussion of it, but it's so hard to explain that I'm even finding a hard time explaining it too. Then there's the German concept of Kopfkino, and that just means that you're suddenly doing something. Maybe you're cleaning your house. Maybe you're watching TV or reading a book, and the next moment, you're off in a daydream or you're thinking about something else. And it's translated as head cinema. And it can be fun. It can be entertaining. Sometimes it can be interesting or something that you are sending a message to yourself, essentially. But it's something to consider when you're talking about thinking in your own head. The next word I like is gemütlichkeit. And it's a German word. And we happen to have in... My neck of the woods, 
Gemitlichkeit days, which just means this idea of coziness, peace of mind, a sense of belonging with other people, a sense of community, and a spirit of fun. It's about being with other people and enjoying each other in a community kind of way. And the Gemitlichkeit days is just a fun time to be with other people and to enjoy the community and the people around you. And if you ever get a chance to go to a festival like this, I highly recommend it. There's similar words in Bulgarian where it talks about that community that's there. J.K. Chesterton mentioned Gemitlichkeit in a book in 1906 when he was talking about Charles Dickens. And he was talking about English comfort. And he said that the thing you cannot see out of Germany is a German beer garden meaning that you have to be there in order to enjoy the spirit of Gemitlichkeit because it's something that's unique to that particular culture. And even if you have English culture, it's still not quite the same thing. To the Zulu, they have the word Ubuntu, which means this belief of togetherness, which is much more in a spiritual way. Someone said, quote, I am because you are. And it's this very big sense of community. So having that part where you play an essential role of being together and it's looking at other people humanely, that they are their own individual who is worthy of compassion and care. And so I think it's a really good word. It really talks about the spirit that we have towards each other and tries to make us look other people without our own selfishness in place. I think it's a great word of community that we could probably use more of when we start to think about other people around us or maybe other people that aren't so close to us. I think the other nice idea, too, is that someone said this concept of Ubuntu has to do with that everyone as individuals, their strengths, their weaknesses, make up this community, make it in a very unique way. And when these multiple personalities come together, it really makes a strong and vibrant community. In Hebrew, there's a word called virgun, which is taking pride over other people doing well. And I think that if we could do better about that, it would help all of us. I think that there's too much comparison. Someone else gets a promotion at work. Are you burning inside because you didn't get the promotion at work? Or are you glad because that other person found something amazing. It's really meant to be unselfish, sympathetic. It really is meant to be genuine that you are happy for them. Someone wrote an article that says it's the art of tooting somebody else's horn. Then there's shushu, which is forgiveness and having mercy on other people in the truest sense of forgiveness. We're all human. We all make mistakes. And to really be there to let that person know that they've been forgiven. There's Gedugi, which is Cherokee, meaning cooperative work, working together so that you can get something that will benefit everybody in society. Also, another great community concept in Swahili, there is Takupamaja, which means we are together, a community spirit of togetherness within a group. There was a book a few years ago called Bowling Alone, which was talking about how we're all becoming split up, that we used to go out and go bowling or belong to a club. We ended up becoming more and more solitary. We don't want to go to a restaurant. We want to take home restaurant quality food. We don't want to go out and play games. We want to buy an Xbox and play games in our own house. I mean, obviously, this book was written in the 1990s, and he never foresaw how more isolated we would even get from the time he was writing this book. I wish, and he's still alive, that he would write a follow-up to it because I'm really interested in what his thoughts are about bowling alone and where we are today. And I think, too, with the pandemic, it got even worse because we had to be alone because there were restrictions on our movement or our actions with other people. And so I think that this idea of community, that we're together and we have a shared purpose or using the Cherokee word where we're doing things together in a common sense of building something that will benefit everybody or 
even in the Chinese word of where we can forgive each other, will help us build those ties up. There's retrouvai, which is a French word, which means that we reunite, we rediscover each other, and we have that joy of getting back together with people that we haven't seen. And that's what I'm talking about when I think about the bowling alone. Isn't it time that we get together and rediscover each other and the joys that we found in each other and in community once again? There's simpatia, which is a Spanish word, which means to have peace and harmony in the relationships with our direct family, with society around us, to be empathetic to other people, and to have that community that I think we could all use right now. So my challenge to you, what's one thing that you can think of this week that could bring you back into a community you have long missed? I was thinking about all the clubs and activities I used to do before the pandemic and how I don't even know if some of them still exist. But is there a way that you can regain some of that community that you missed for the last couple of years? And now our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Goodwill Hunting with Matt Damon and Robin Williams. Stuff, you know, little things like that. Yeah, but those are the things I miss the most. The little idiosyncrasies that only I knew about. That's what made her my wife. Oh, and she had the goods on me, too. She knew all my little peccadillos. People call these things imperfections, but they're not. Oh, that's the good stuff. And then we get to choose who we let into our weird little worlds. You're not perfect, sport. And let me save you the suspense. This girl you met, she isn't perfect either. But the question is whether or not you're perfect for each other. That's the whole deal. That's what intimacy is all about. Now, you can know everything in the world, sport, but the only way you're finding out that one is by giving it a shot. And that's true. If we're staying solitary, that's one thing. But if we're trying to get close to someone, it's about those weird, strange moments of someone really knowing us, even our weird things, even our funny things, and even the things that we just don't tell anyone. And if we really want to be known by other people, the whole point is being known fully and letting them see all your silly things, all your fears and emotions, and all the things that you hide from everyone else. Robin Williams has it right. That is the true gem of having relationships with others. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful week. Go out there and become a community with someone. And if you want to become a community with me, you can always drop me an email at jill at smallstepspod.com. Have a wonderful week. Bye.